Hey, Scott Walker coming to you from the Synergistic Research Scott Walker Audio Room here at Florida Audio Expo. I'm here with Ted Denny. And uh, we're going to just have a quick uh, discussion about the most asked about products in our room. So, Ted, Number one product people ask about is the tower. Can you say a few words about the tower and what it is? Okay, the Vibratron is an acoustic resonator. It's related to my original acoustic art system, which came out almost 20 years ago. You know, which, remember what Crazy. I went? Yeah, I, so, I can't believe it. And the reason they're asking about it, Scott, is I'm demonstrating it. Yeah. I, I play a track yep. with it in place. I take it out of the room. Yep. I play it again. People literally can't believe what they're hearing. Yeah. So they come and talk to you about That's it. it. That's yeah. it. Other thing they ask about is this device, the ground block. The Galileo Active Ground yes. Block. Well, yes. Synergistic so Research, that. to my knowledge, built the world's first active ground filter for high-end audio. Yes. And we did that about nine years ago, yeah. almost a decade ago. Yeah. And this is the culmination of 10 years of relentless evolution and product development. Um, it enables you to bias the Earth Schumann, or your, your ground with harmonics of the Earth Schumann resonance. Yeah. So you don't have to have it biased with Wi-Fi and cell tower and cell phones and all this stuff, which just creates noise, which really degrades the listening experience. Instead, you replace that with harmonics of the Earth Schumann resonance. And each of these harmonics gives you a different take on the sound, and you pick the take in the context of your system by listening to it with your different frequency options. And, and you have all of the system grounded to it? We have all of the tranquility bases under all the components are grounded to the Galileo Active Ground Block. The tranquility racks are grounded to yeah. the Active Ground Block. All of the components are grounded to the Active Ground Block. Um, the shields of my cables are grounded to the Active Ground Block. Even the Vibratron, which for whatever reason sounds better grounded, is grounded to the active yeah. ground block. And the cool thing about synergistic ground products is most companies today in the industry that sell high-end ground solutions give you two, three, four, six yeah. connections. Okay, we have, over, we have over 50 connections on this and we use them all up. We're going to have a Galileo active ground block coming up very soon with over 60 connections yeah. and people will use them all up. I really wonder, you know, where the value structure is. Yeah. If you've only got four things you can ground to a $10,000 box. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, it depends on the components. Yeah. Ted, the, the box here on the floor, the base yeah. device. Uh, the black box. Number one, uh, top five thing people ask about, because, yeah. you know, we demo it in and out of the room. Talk about the base device here. This is an acoustic resonator, similar technology to this. Yeah. But it's tuned and, and, and set up to handle low frequencies in your room. Yes. So you get less overhang, yeah. so your base is tighter, you have more articulation yeah. in the base. And just like the Vibratron, it opens up the sound stage. Yeah. And the Vibratron also helps with the bass a little bit. So yeah. these, these things work together. We have three of these boxes and little big ugly bass traps that people don't have in their living room because yeah. they're ugly. Yeah. They have bass problems, well. Now people get black boxes, you can have a beautiful home without it looking like a science experiment. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things people ask a lot yeah. about are the little devices, these little HFTs. These, these little HFTs that are on the speakers and on the walls. Talk about the HFT real quick. Something I developed about 15 years ago, it stands for High Frequency Transducer. When we first launched them, we launched them at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest and I used a plastic Bose I wave radio to there. do it. Yeah. And we actually had great sound yep. with a crummy little plastic radio, yep. Bose radio. Um, this is an HFT speaker kit. It comes with all the HFTs you need. You have a special HFT for below the tweeter and it's color coded. One for below the bottom driver or just at the lower portion of your speaker. A special one for either side of the speaker. One for behind the speaker. If it's ported, put it near the port. And it comes with one to go on the ceiling above each speaker. And that cons each kit constitutes all the HFTs you need for one speaker. And, but why would you put the HFTs on the speaker? And the reason you do it is you get higher resolution, bass does seem tighter. Yes, it does. And you get a much bigger sound stage. High frequencies are more extended, but they're more relaxed. And it, it just sounds a lot better. And people can easily try it in their system. If they don't like it, they'll send back, how many 
think nobody returns the fuses either. Right, People right, love right. it. Very few, very few, very few. Yeah. And the last thing that I think is the most asked about product here is the tower. The FEQ the little, carbon. The little tower. Yep. Yeah. Talk about that real quick, if you could. Well, uh, I began experimentation with the Earth Schumann resonance when I was reading about it. You know, people were using it on the lunatic fringe and audio. So I thought, you know, there's enough smoke here. I'm going to investigate, okay? So I did investigate, right? And uh, then we started to build our own generators. And just as no two amplifiers sound the same, no yeah. two turntables yeah. sound the same, yeah. no two tires are exactly the same on track. No two acoustic, uh, no two Schumann generators are the same. And we have dozens and dozens of innovations that we've developed over the intervening 15, 10, 15 yeah. years that we've been doing this. This most recent one uses a carbon fiber chassis, which improves its function because it is conductive and it works well with the antennas. Yeah. It's broadcasting over two different channels so we can broadcast multiple harmonics at the same time. Yes. And when you press the button going from red to purple, yeah. red is best for most recordings. It has the most immediate focus in the room and dynamically controlled of the options. Yeah. But if you're listening to something that has a lot of phase tricks in the mix, like Q Sound or Kruder, you know, Kruder and Dorfmeister, yeah. Madonna has some sure, stuff, sure. Uh, Roger Waters, Pink Floyd. Whereas this will make a small recording sound bigger, but a little phasey. Yeah. If you have an absolutely huge fo uh, recording, it will tighten up the focus on it and you'll have things imaging all around you, behind you, everywhere. Yeah. And so that's what the purple is setting is for. And you really just pick between red and purple and it works brilliantly as described. So, so Ted, this not in the signal path, that's completely passive. Um, Correct, outside the except signal that path. it's grounded to the Galileo Active Ground Block. And this is passive, it's, it's, Correct. it's a device you place in the room. Same thing with the black none box. None of them are plugged in, or none are plugged into the signal path. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that I've missed here that people ask mostly about when you're demoing? Are people asking about the MIG SX footers? Uh, of course they are. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, yep. And this is actually one of the most powerful products we build. This is a MIG SX footer. You have three of them under a component. If you set two round down and one round up, that gives you a more pinpoint focus presentation, similar to the red setting on the FEQ carbon. If you do two round up and one round down, you get a more ambient broad br brush perspective, softer, more liquid. You listen to your two options on each component starting as high up the signal chain as you can. Yeah. When you find either pinpoint or ambient that works best, you go to the next component. Most systems will predominantly prefer one of the two settings. Yes. But you will always find one or two applications where the inverse is true, and then you get the best of both. What works best for the system though is dependent on unique characteristics with you and your system as well as your own personal preferences and the way you listen to music, the way you process music. So which components have you found these to be most effective underneath? DACs, of course, what preamplifiers? Oh, every, even the power cell line conditioner oh, yeah. improves significantly. Yeah. That one always sounds best pinpoint. Yeah. This system was all pinpoint configuration, so yeah. two round down, one round up. It, I remember in this With system, the exception of the preamp. The preamp sounded better in ambient. That was yeah. the only thing. Yeah. We do have components that they don't sound great with. And that's because that would be the Galileo active ground block, our linear power supplies, our uh, ethernet switches. They sound best with a carbon fiber footer. It doesn't look like much when you look at it, it comes bolted to the inside of the unit. But there's something going on there that we don't talk about. And that works best with these components. And these components assume that it's going to be in a predominantly synergistic system with yeah. mix, and so it all balances out. Yeah. So. Okay. Great. Uh, anything we've missed? Let's see. What else is around the room? Anything that we've missed that people ask uh, uh, a lot about? The tuning bullets. Uh, when when you tune on and off the cables, you yeah. have the little tuning uh, the ability to tune the cables. Yeah. Um, people, if I do that demo, people ask about. People it. ask about it. Yeah. So, um, we so have you have the ability to voice all synergistic cables now, yeah. even going down to the SR30 level. Yes. And if you have no way to voice a cable to a system, what do you do, right? Yeah. 
how do you make your system work? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have the ability to voice the cables to the system, then you're going to have the right cables for your system. Yeah, if something cha your system changes, yeah. you can revoice. Otherwise, you're, you're bringing in a new parade of expensive shiny boxes, yeah. and you're losing your shirt on the old boxes. Yeah. Or you're going to cable stew, which creates as many problems as it attempts to solve. The nice thing is, is you can tune sort of the gestalt of the system to yeah. your preference. Correct. And different so, people prize different aspects of sound. Yeah. There yeah. is no one right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is the end of the chain. This is not in the recording chain. Yeah. At this point, you do you set up the system so that you enjoy it. Yeah. It has nothing to do with how it was recorded. Because it, there's nothing coming after this unless you're recording your system on YouTube or something. So, okay, most asked questions about our room, right there. Most most requested products. There you go.